Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the area as well as the perimeter of a triangle when just given three points. So when we're given three points, basically what we need to do is first graph, um, so we kind of see what type of triangle we have, and then we need to identify the length of the base as well as the length of the height to be able to find the area, and then we need to find the length of every single side to be able to find the perimeter. So first thing is first, when you're given a set of points, is just to plot them. And I think obviously, you know, we need to know these measurements um, to go ahead and, you know, find the, the distance. But also I think visually, one, two, three, four, five, it is important to make sure we kind of know what exactly we're looking at. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So you can see here I have this triangle, and it looks like it is a right triangle as I have horizontal and vertical lines. It's also very helpful to, to write in. Uh, make sure you label, you know, what your points are. Now, in this case, uh, what you can see is, you know, I have a fairly basic one um, as far as finding the area. You can see here that QS is going to be our base. Now, remember, the area of the triangle is one half base times height. So I can say QS is going to be my base. Now, um, if you remember, Q side QS. Side QS is, you could find the distance. A lot of times you can easily just count. But remember, when we go back to that number line, when we were talking about the sides, you know, on the number line, it's just really the difference of our two, in this case, x values, and just taking the absolute value of that. So I can really just look at this Q and S and just do 1 minus 5, which is equal to absolute value of negative 4, which is equal to 4. Now, the easy way is really just counting, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. But I want to make sure, just to remind you of something that we did before, it's just really finding that difference and then taking the absolute value of that. Um, to find the height, I'm just going to do RS. And again, now here, that's going to be the difference of the Y values. So I'm just going to do that uh, RS. So I'll do you know, 6 minus 2, which again is going to equal to 4. So the absolute value of positive 4 in this case, which is still 4. So therefore, I have area equals 1 half base times your height. So 4 times 4 is 16 times 1 half is equal to 8. And then that's going to be a 8 uh, you know, units, unit squared since we're dealing with a graph. Um, now the one thing is we haven't figured out is our Q. And hopefully you guys kind of see that this is a right triangle, right? So in our Q, to find that distance, we could just use the Pythagorean theorem, which is basically the same thing as the distance formula. If you kind of recall what we talked about, you know, how to find, you know, the dis um, how to use the different distance form, which we'll be using for the rest of these. But in this case, I'm just going to kind of get into it, or just kind of go through. We know that this RS is equal to the square root, because we know R cubed, mostly, RQ is squared, is equal to QS squared plus RS squared. Right? I mean, that's the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if I just take the square root on both sides, I get rq is equal to qs, which is 4 squared, plus rs, which is 4, and then squared. So therefore, I have 16, 16 plus 16 equals 32. Now, uh, for this, we're actually, I'm going to have you round to the nearest tenth. Um, so in the nearest tenth in this case, so I'll have the square root of 32 is going to be 5.7. And I really don't like uh, rounding radicals. Um, I like leaving them as regular or simplifying them. But at this point in the game, we're just going to round them to the nearest tenth. So therefore, I have 5.7 is going to be distance. However, that does not tell us what the perimeter is, right? The perimeter is equal to RQ plus QS plus RS, which is 4 plus 4 plus 5.7, which is equal to 8 um, plus 5.7 is going to be 13.7. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the area as well as the perimeter. Now, let's kind of work into one that's maybe not as nice um, with us algebraically. So in this one, we have E, which is at 1, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have G, which is at 1, 2, 1, 2. And F, which is at 7, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then 1, 2, 3. OK. So now you can see that um, I do not have um, a right triangle anymore. right? And 
So therefore, I need to first of all kind of determine what is the easiest way for me to identify the base and the height. Well, if I took this triangle and I kind of rotated it like this, therefore then I could say that this side is the base and this side could represent the height. Because remember, to find the area, you need to figure out what is the base as well as the height. Now the base is not too bad. Oops, I forgot to label these. This is G and that's F. So let's do EG. Now for time purposes, so this video is not going to take forever, I'm just going to actually use my line. Whenever I have something, I, you know, even though this works and that's great, I wanted to only show it to you so you kind of understand where it came from. But in this case, let's just kind of simplify this and let's just count. One, two, three, four. So EG is equal to four. So that's going to be my base. Now I need to find the height, which you can just say is basically, remember the base and the height are perpendicular to one another, right? So therefore, I can just count here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to say the height is equal to 6. So therefore, the area equals 1 half 4 times 6. Well, 4 times 6 is 24 times 1 half is going to equal 12. Okay. Now to find the perimeter, we notice that we have two diagonals here, right? And we don't have a right triangle, so we can't use Pythagorean theorem like we used before. However, what the height does kind of do is it does kind of show us that we can create kind of two different right triangles, so therefore we can find those distances each. Now, um, da, 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 da. to make sure I remind you of the distance formula, because the distance formula is very helpful, I'm going to write it in here again. Distance formula equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And that x2 and x1, y2 and y1, those are between any two points. So for instance, E and F, I could look at E and say, I'm going to make E x1 and y1. And I'm going to make F uh, x2 and y2. OK? It doesn't really matter. You could switch them around, but as long as they're both 1s and 1s for the same point and 2 and 2 for the same point. Now, to find EG, or I'm sorry, EF, I can just basically say EF is going to be the distance, right? The line distance, distance. So that's going to be equal to x2, which is 7, minus x1, so that's 1, squared, plus y2, which is 3, minus 6, which is y1, squared. And you can see that you know, the squaring kind of is what takes place of this absolute value. It's always going to make the distance positive, because distance is always positive. Um, 7 minus 1 is 6. 6 squared is going to be 36. And then 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 is going to negative 3 is going to squared is going to equal 9. So that equals the square root of 45, which again we're going to approximate to the nearest tenth for these problems. So I'll do the square root of 45, which is going to be 6.7. Okay? And then for GF, I'm going to do the same thing. But I'm going to kind of like speed this up a little bit. And for GF, I know, again, it's really, since I kind of created this right triangle, I could really just say, well, it's really kind of like, again, Pythagorean theorem with you know, this height, which we know is 6, and then this length is 1. Because as long as you create a Pythagorean theorem, as long as you create a right triangle, you can really apply a Pythagorean theorem. So if you feel comfortable with the distance formula, redo g as x1, y1, and then keep f as x2, y2, and then plug it into the formula. Or you could also say, well, this side is 1, this is 6. I kind of created a right triangle. I can basically say that's just going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 6 squared, which is equal to the square root of 7, which is approximately 2.6457513, I believe, square root of 7. 2.6457513311. So therefore, let's round that to 2.6. So approximately 2.6. OK, and then let's just go ahead and add all of those up. So it's going to be 12 plus 16.7. So that's going to be 18.7. And that would be 20. That would be 21.2. So the perimeter is going to be the addition of all of my sides which is going to be 21.3, I'm sorry. And let me just double check in case I don't want to make sh don't want to have my video be incorrect. 21.3. Perfect. All right, last but not least, uh, let's kind of go through this and I'll try to again 
quicken this one up. But again, first thing, before you know what we're dealing with, we got to be able to find, the, find what we're looking at. So we have g, which is at negative 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, e, which is at 1, 1, and f, which is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Okay. So g, e, f. Ah, OK. So in this example, it uh, looks like we have this obtuse triangle. And you can see we have a base, like, right? It seems like we have a pretty good base here, EF. Um, so uh, that's pretty good. But now the next thing is I need to find the height. And again, remember the height is like, how tall is something? So G, EG doesn't say how tall it is. FG doesn't say how tall it is. The height is from the base to the top. That is the height. How far, how far is that distance? Well, we don't need to use the distance formula. We can just, or use you know, this, we can just count. One, two, one, two, three. So therefore, if I want to find the area, I can say EF is going to be my base. And again, I wouldn't want to orientate it like I had to do you know, for this problem, was like move that around. I'm going to say area equals 1 half, 3 times 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Oh, OK, times 3. Because we can say that uh, EF is equal to 3. And that's just me counting, right? So that's going to be 3 times 3 is 9 times 2 is I'm sorry, 3 times 3 is 9 divided by 2. So that's going to be 9 halves, which is approximately, or which is equal to 4.5. Sorry. So we know EF is equal to 3. Now let's go ahead and, um, now let's go ahead and find uh, G, GE. Now again, to find GE, um, you can do the distance formula. And again, let's just kind of do this real quick, just because I know a lot, I want to make sure everybody kind of understands. GE, we can just say that's x1, that's y1. And if I want to find E, that will be x2, y2. And then basically, we just plug them into the formula. And that's going to give us our distance. So therefore, that's going to be square root of 1, or let's do x2. Yeah, 1 minus negative 1 squared. Make sure you plug in 1 minus negative 1. A lot of people make mistakes on that one. Um, and then plus 1 minus 4 squared. So 1 minus, 1 minus negative 1 is going to be 2. 2 squared is 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. So that equals the square root of 13, which I need to approximate. So the square root of 13 is going to be 3.6, approximately. All right, and then let's do uh, GF. Now for GF, I'm just going to use the Pythagorean theorem again. I could, use, I could do the same thing, you know, use the distance formula. But I know that here, by finding the height, I created a right triangle, right? So GF is really this height, which is 3, and then this distance from this height to F, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So therefore, I could say that's equal to the square root of 3 squared, which is the height, and then the length, which is 5 squared. 3 squared is 9 plus 5 squared is 25. So 9 plus 25 is going to be 34. So now the square root of 34 is going to be 5.8, approximately. And therefore, to find the perimeter, I'm just going to add up all of my sides. So I'm going to do 3 plus. 3.6 plus 5.8. And therefore, I get 12.4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the area as well as the perimeter of a triangle when given three points. Thanks.